Hi, it's Mark Bernard here uh, with the Bernard Institute for Cybersecurity Excellence. And today I'm going to be talking about management systems. And we're going to go through an explanation using a couple different definitions so that hopefully we can add some clarity. I know uh, based on my uh, experience out there in the cybersecurity world, there tends to be a little bit of confusion uh, between a different between different layers and different types of uh, information security and technology security. So I'm hoping that this video will help clarify that and explain it a little bit. So we're going to review uh, information security, what it is. Technology security is different than information security, in case you didn't realize. I'm going to talk about that. Cybersecurity is even more different. <laughs> and of course, then there's the information security management system, which is what we're going to get to. Okay. So information security uh, protects information in all formats, including digital, physical, during the collection, transmission, processing, and storage. This is sort of the life cycle of information. Life cycle is very important when it comes to information. Um, it's not just information, by the way, because information leads to knowledge and wisdom. So, and, and certainly uh, if you're trained, uh, you can tell the difference between data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. There are uh, subtleties between the difference. Uh, knowledge and information is an essential asset. This is the information age. All organizations run on information. Uh, they need information in order to uh, run their operations day to day. And in most cases, when they're working with customers or clients or regulators, uh, they also uh, handle information. And we wanna protect that information from internal threats and external threats. These threats include, but are not limited to, unauthorized access, disclosure, interception, unintentional modification, and destruction. Uh, different types of information assets include intellectual property, customer information, and knowledge that humans bring with them. And a couple uh, techniques, the way that we protect these is we, we can classify and uh, conduct valuation or val uh, valuation of assets in order to determine what the value is. Uh, we could also uh, create security standards and apply those um, to make sure that the information is encrypted, for instance. And we can provide handling procedures and training and awareness in order to teach people how to identify different types of information and protect that information. Next up at bat is technology security. Now, technology security is different than information security. So information security, we're concerned with information. Technology security protects hardware, software, algorithms, encryption keys, networks, telecommunications, access control systems, closed circuit television, intrusion prevention systems, firewalls, routers, switches, uh, load balancers uh, from failure, self-destruction, hacked, from being hacked, misused, and theft. And of course, most hackers uh, go after the hardware and software vulnerabilities in order to get to the information. Information can be protected ultimately by encryption and proper handling and security standards, even though the technology might process the information. Uh, the technology may not uh, allow full access, but certainly this is where the hackers go. They go to the technology because there are published vulnerabilities and exploits, and they can use those published vulnerabilities and exploits to get to the information. Now, some examples of technology inc include data centers. Uh, you're seeing here a rack. Uh, some data centers have hundreds of racks, and every rack has uh, a, a number of servers in it or different types of technology applications, okay? Um, there's the traditional data center, uh, which is kind of disappearing, and we're seeing more cloud computing. But in the cloud computing centers, they also have racks. So racks are part of the technology uh, that is used to process information. Mobile devices, so it could be a smartphone, it could be a laptop, tablet, what have you. Um, these are mobile devices. They're not attached to the office. They're not attached to a network cable. They use Wi-Fi usually to communicate, so that means that there needs to be security standards around that. And then we have software, and software is really important because uh, most people don't access data directly. Um, they have to go through some kind of a software application. And of course, apps are very popular on the internet and with mobile devices. And, uh, and there's other types of software. There's many, many, probably thousands of types of software, in fact. We have enterprise resource planning systems. We have utility programs that access data. Uh, we have all kinds of different uh, coding uh, systems. We have C Sharp. We have um, uh, a number of them that you, you might be familiar with. Uh, 
that are used to generate code that access information, uh, usually to maintain a database. So the typical stuff like adding records, changing records, maintaining records, deleting records, and maybe integrating systems or sending data from one system to another system. Lots of different applications with lots of different purposes. And we, uh, <clears throat> and we protect uh, data centers, computers with standards, security standards that we implement, but we also have to have more formal procedures, uh, even for cloud computing. So we need policies, procedures, and standards. These are some of the techniques we use. Um, also with mobile devices, we have mobile, something called mobile device management. We also have, you know, uh, advanced threat uh, prevention systems and we have uh, data loss prevention applications, a number of uh, systems that can be used to monitor mobile devices. And for software, we have, you know, obviously we have access control systems. We also have mobile applicant uh, uh, application management systems, which help manage what information people could access from their mobile devices. So that's technology. So information, technology, and finally cybersecurity. Now cybersecurity protects data, information, knowledge in all formats, including visual, audio, streaming, during collection, transmission, processing, and storage over the internet. Cybersecurity is all about protecting information over public networks, okay? And the internet, of course, is the, the largest global public network that anyone has seen ever. And uh, where do we protect cybersecurity at? Well, uh, you know, most recently during the pandemic, of course, there's been more and more home offices uh, creeping up. People are working from home. Uh, so your home office is probably the number one place where cybersecurity needs to be applied. Uh, Off-campus locations. So these are kind of unauthorized locations where you might stop. Uh, it could be the local coffee shop to do some work. Uh, there's lots of opportunities for people to uh, approach your system or try and access your system from those locations. And then, of course, while you're traveling, airports and hotels, these are number one locations uh, where uh, hackers, you know, can, uh, you know, get a room and go and hack some business travelers and try and steal some information from them. Uh, so you need home security as a technique that we can use to protect the home office. So it talks about the physical and the logical security of your devices. And then on campus, of course, we have mobile uh, security standards, mobile device security standards. We also want to train people about social engineering, about how to recognize not just the digital social engineering like phishing, for example, but also person-to-person uh, -person, uh, social engineering, which is quite common, you know, somebody coming up and asking for your help or something as they watch your screen or see what kind of information you're processing. And then, of course, uh, secure telecommunications wherever you go, uh, whether it's in the hotel or whether it's in the airport or even when you're in these off-campus locations or at home, telecommunications is very important. Now, the ISMS program definition is as follows. So the, the I, Information Security Management System is the acronym ISMS, and it has uh, seven procedures. These are seven procedures uh, that we've created uh, based on a very common uh, the only internationally accepted standard, ISO 27001. Um, and it, it includes a number of procedures that align the uh, information security or the cybersecurity program with the organization's goals and objectives. And these procedures include governance, risk management, continual improvement, strategic communications, awareness, training, internet, internal audit, and record and document administration. Now we have information, as we talked about, InfoSec. And then we have TechSec. So uh, technology is used to access information. So we have two layers of security here. So we have security on the information itself, and then we have security on the technology. And then hopefully we have security on the telecommunications or the CyberSec. And then the ISMS provides the wrapper around all three of these assets. And a very important uh, wrapper, uh, make sure to identify the risks and treat the risks and make sure that they're managed on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's, this framework is based on, again, ISO 27001 Information Security Management System. In program summary, we have information security, technology security, cybersecurity, and information security management systems. None of them are the same. They're all very different, but they're all layers in how we protect information and handle security. You can reach us on the internet, on LinkedIn or Facebook, YouTube channel. I want to thank you for your time. Drop us an email or drop us a text message or a phone call. Have a great day and enjoy the security of your systems.